This video is sponsored by Single Point Solution. Single Point is pioneer in production and distribution of electric vehicles like electric bikes, electric scooters and three-wheelers. Single Point also provide consulting services to small F players. Hello friends, I am Kanchan from Akulmak Technologies and you are welcome to our show. Today, uh, our show is mixed of little sad news and of course some uh, ideas about women empowerment when it comes to uh, armed forces in India. And uh, I want, just want to tell you that uh, Dr. Vijay Lakshmi Ramana, who was uh, the first woman officer of, of Indian Air Force, uh, who was commander, uh, passed away on 18th of October this year. So it was a bit uh, sad news. Uh, but I also want to tell you that she uh, served, she got permanent commission in 1971. And she is also a recipient of uh, uh, the Vishish Seva Medal. And this brings to more crucial point is that what is the position of Indian women in Indian Armed Forces? To discuss about this topic, we have Sitesh Srivastava, who, ha who has a deep interest in corporate training. He is closely associated with radio broadcasting. So welcome to the show, Sitesh. How are you today? Thank you, Kanchan. It is a good day to on my side, and I hope it is a good day on your side as well. Uh, it, it's fine, and the conversation that we are going to do is a very interesting conversation. How have you been? Yeah, I'm fine, and uh, as you know, today it's a sunny day here, so a bit uh, kind of relief from all three, four days. It was pouring like anything. So today, as, as you know, we are discussing about uh, the position of women in armed forces because armed forces doesn't only mean uh, Navy, Army or Air Force, but also we have Central Reserve Force, we have Central Industrial Force, we have Border Security uh, uh, Force, and we have Shahistar Seema Bal. So why, why uh, women are so, uh, so much not as far with, with uh, men in our forces. So Kanchan, I think uh, we have come a very, very long way when it comes to the participation of women in the Indian Armed Forces. Uh, in the modern history, uh, I can recall from Khub Ladi Mardani Voto Jhansi Wali Raniti. From those days uh, till the women in the Indian National Army, which was by, uh, established by uh, Subhash Chandra Bose and then into the Indian uh, Army of the Liberated India. And therefore, it, it marks a, a progress uh, from those days till uh, today. And Vijayalakshmi Raman, Nan, the retired wing commander, was definitely a, a trailblazer in that uh, a line of uh, uh, officers. Uh, and especially that too in the Indian Air Force, uh, which is more challenging, I would believe, uh, than the armed forces, Indian armed forces. And uh, she, she was, uh, uh, I mean, it says a lot when you said she's, she's a wishish to save our medal, which is also given for an exemplary service and not just the rank. And uh, being the first officer, uh, we can uh, only imagine how much of uh, motivation she would have been uh, for the women of her generation. And we are talking in terms of 1955, you know, when it was still the time of black and white films and the Bollywood was not known as Bollywood. How do you feel? Uh, yes, definitely. And uh, you have mentioned uh, uh, about the army of uh, Netaji Subhashtra and Bose. You also mentioned, mentioned about Rani Lakshmi Bai, but in between there was a decline uh, when it comes to women joining forces or women, women joining police force. Because uh, what I have come to know in recent years is that in 1992, Indian Army began inducting women officers. And that too in a non-medical um, area because earlier there were used to be all medical related services like nurses and all that. 
Then uh, in 1993, there was uh, Priya as one of the first 25 women to join army officers uh, being in India. So, uh, well, you said that there was, I think in between there was a decline in this. And I think it has increased maybe by uh, 2000 onwards. So this is a rise of uh, in uh, recruitment in uh, the army uh, uh, when it comes to uh, Indian uh, women. That's true. That's true. And it, it feels good uh, when I see our uh, women soldiers, women police officers, women security officers at various public inst establishments and institutions. And, and that shows uh, uh, the integrity that this democracy has to for uh, having an inclusive way of bringing uh, both women and men together in all walks of life, in all walks of professions, and especially in the security uh, sector. Uh, so I think it, it, it is uh, this uh, passing off of uh, Ms. Ramnan needs to be celebrated and more um, women, uh, uh, young women, uh, especially from the tier two and tier three towns need to be uh, told about her story, her journey and motivated to take up uh, the career they, they, uh, they want to choose. Many times I feel uh, many of the young women, they don't even know the career choices that they have. They are not even told about it. Some biases are still prevalent in most of the Indian homes. And therefore uh, it takes a courage of a family uh, to you know, take that leap of faith uh, with, with the woman child. And I think uh, uh, Dr. Vijay Lakshmi Ramanan's family, especially her parents, uh, need to be thanked that in those days, when, uh, when it was still not a known thing, they promoted her daughter uh, to join the armed forces. Uh, though it was on the medical side, but it, were, it would have been definitely a rewarding and a very, very rewarding career uh, that I can see. And uh, in 1979, she retired. And then she served as gynecologist to almost all the Air Force hospitals. And that, uh, that goes as a tradition in, in, in the Indian Armed Forces. Uh, she is respected in, in the army hospitals across the country. Uh, AFMC Pune, Air Force Medical College Pune is a very, very known uh, hospital and uh, where uh, she has been uh, a celebrated gynecologist. So I think this is the opportunity where we can take uh, her story to the masses, to the middle class homes, upper middle class, lower middle class homes, where, and, and uh, where, the, where the women still are going through uh, some of those biases, which should be removed because they are equally competent to be in the workforce, to stand shoulder to shoulder with men. And uh, now at least we even have pilots in the Air Force. Right. And along with the Vijay Lakshmi Ramanan, I also want to mention uh, that uh, our very uh, important name is Dr. Barbara Ghosh, who in October uh, 1976, she became the first uh, woman officer in the Indian Navy and to attain a rank of commander. And along with this, uh, Dr. Punita Arora, commissioned in 1968, is the first woman in Indian Navy to reach the second highest rank as a Lieutenant General and first woman Vice Admiral. So, but uh, what I think is it took uh, almost uh, some time, 2000, when, when we got first woman uh, uh, officer who got Gallantry Award. Is uh, Lieutenant Colonel Mitali Madhumita. So it took a lot of time to really uh, accept the courage uh, of women, especially in armed forces. Is it? Yes, uh, I think uh, the the story and the movement and uh, the mobilization of women into the Indian armed forces is a story which is not as smooth as it sounds like today. It had its own checkered. Uh, movement of progress 
recently there was a bollywood movie uh, uh, also uh, i i think you might remember the name of the movie and it was portrayed as in a negative shade of light if i am correct uh, right what was the movie name kanchan uh actually i uh, have uh, because it was in uh, in in the news but i think it is about uh, uh, officer who who was portrayed very negative uh, role and kind give bad name to indian air force where it is uh, blamed that uh, indian air force uh, deal with gender bias which is absolutely wrong so uh, and that i think it is was in court and uh, uh indian air force had already won this case i guess and yeah uh, so this was this was not, about gunj the Dharma movie was gunjan saxena's biopic right right and it is uh, asked dharma production to uh, put hold on this picture put it on shelves so and, uh, this movie is not in the market as of now right so i think it it is it is uh, i think uh, we need to uh, kind of uh, Uh, take this as a campaign uh, for the women uh, i think we have a great tradition of women getting into the sports and that too you sit in a place uh, in hyderabad which is known for the women's badminton and there is something very secretive about hyderabad which produces so great badminton players so but army uh, given a choice of uh, getting into the indian armed forces navy air force and the army i think uh, uh there needs to be um a campaign uh, women need to be promo- you know promoted in the schools for the national cadet corps uh, that is ncc uh, where they should be taught about uh, uh, uh you know there used to be ncc was very popular back in my days uh, kanchan in the schools i'm not sure at this point of time how much ncc is ncc is a very great place to you know introduce the armed forces uh into the life of a student and uh, i think that is a great place for the indian women in their schools the girls schools the co education schools the colleges and, and even in the you know uh middle or higher secondary schools yes uh, i think uh, in recent year we have seen uh, some changes like if you uh, look uh, in the data of uh, indian air force uh, indian air force is index women in all roles including combat and support roles as of now till september 2020 there uh, are 1875 female officers including 10 pilots and 18 navigators so uh, there is definitely a rise uh, in the uh, in the recruitment in uh, Armed forces and also a change in the uh, perspective of uh, families and communities towards women going in the armed forces, and that is very very crucial. Correct, Kanchan, and I think uh, uh, armed forces is definitely a very coveted position, uh, coveted uh, area to be. Besides that, there are other areas: National Security Guard, Special Protection Group, Railway Protection Force, National Disaster Response Force. there are many avenues that women can get into and i i i just as i told you i'm very proud to see them at least in the airports uh whenever i fly and uh, it's it's great to see their integrity great to say see the professionalism that they bring uh in the jobs and uh, there there is no way to feel even an iota of doubt that they would be any lesser in in you know taking care of the security work that they are entitled or they have been asked to uh, do so i think uh, i would like to uh, suggest one step further that every each and every indian should be given at least 2 to 3 years army training before really uh, taking up job that will ensure a discipline in the life and i think uh, nationalism will also be get improved by this and people who uh, are creating sometimes fake news because nowadays it is a fashion to create a fake news about everything so especially creating a fake news for for army they will think twice to really come out with a fake narrative narrative what do you think no that is that is actually becoming a more bigger a problem uh, the deep fake news the fake news it is a whole industry all around 
and uh, uh, there there are so many things which can influence uh, nowadays in the digital uh, media that we are almost glue uh, glued to during our waking up time and uh, it has in fact eating up our sleeping time as well it's very easy to manipulate our mindsets and especially on the women's stories that are going around uh, uh, I, i mean these are very very few uh, depictions are motivating uh, in the in the popular media is still the stereotype stories are being you know dished out again and again either in the radio uh, or i can see in the television medium very few you remember kanchan the udan serial many years back you know uh, you might remember we had a serial called arohan about a tele serial showcasing women officers serving in the indian navy and uh, so it is and now the gunjan saxena which is has be actually become a controversial movie there was a web series in the, called the test case in 2007 about the first woman training to serve uh, the combat role so so uh, you know there are more needs to be done in terms of the media in terms of i i i live very close to uh, hindustan aeronautics limited uh, establishment all the billboards kanchan are not having a single woman there okay. which surprising so it needs to change the mindset needs to change the promotion needs to change the media needs to portray it in a different way and um, uh, it, they they need to be celebrated in 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 our popular media yes and that that's what i said that all the filmmakers who have no idea about how the army works they are making films about army so i think it's very very it should be mandatory for each and every citizen to really go and take a training at least for 2 to 3 years in army and know how army works and of course uh, uh, women should uh, take a lead and they are taking lead and they have no restriction of joining army at the moment maybe uh, the recruitment will increase in various areas of army isn't it what is your idea Yes. that is true and i think more uh, uh, i think there is a great momentum at this point of time and uh, uh, the other day i was seeing a, a, a discussion happening uh, on uh, on our national channel doordarshan about some of the women who are uh, part of uh, uh, top level administrative positions and i could i was surprised to see you know uh, uh, lieutenant uh, uh, level uh, women Uh, in that and uh, ips level women in that and uh, security forces in jammu and kashmir heading those, those uh, sensitive uh, posts uh, so it, it it is it is very good to see these kind of discussions uh, happening in the mainstream media but more needs to be done and i would suggest that we need to move away from the bias we need to move away uh uh from the uh, the what you call uh, this is how it has always been this is the indian thought we have to think from uh, like singapore there there is a army training is must uh israel it it is must uh, for, for for men and women both so i think uh, we we have taken a great strides in that it is still a very less to be seen in a 1.25 billion uh, people in this country but uh, it it is certainly on our doorstep and uh, it cannot be avoided yes so with the, the message that more power to women I'll, what i would like to end this session today we'll discuss more interesting uh, sessions and episode in our upcoming programs till then bye bye take care great thank you what a great subject during this navratri <laughs>